What's up YouTube? My name is Clickwood and I am back again today bringing you guys what will likely be the final episode of my budget series here on Madden 25 Ultimate Team. And today we're going to be talking about what is probably the most important position in the entire game. And that's right, we're talking about quarterbacks. Now, I think that a lot of people look at the quarterback position as one where you need to spend a lot of coins. You need to get the 99 overall cards. You need to make sure that you have Randall Cunningham or Peyton Manning or, you know, one of these high overall cards. And if you don't have one of those cards, then, well, you're SOL. You're probably not going to be able to win games. But I'm here to tell you that that's not true. I'm here to tell you that you can get budget cards in this game that will be able to win games for you. And today, we're going to be filling this position for under 7,500 coins. But before we get into that, I want to make sure that I thank everybody who has liked this series, everybody that shared the videos. I even saw somebody creating this team as a lineup on Mudhead. So thank you guys all for doing that. It really does mean a lot. These videos have helped grow my channel just exponentially, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to continue to bring you guys some unique content, stuff that other people aren't doing on YouTube that, you know, you guys might be interested in, stuff that there's a void for on YouTube, and I'm trying to fill that void and give you guys content that you guys are going to enjoy, and I'm going to enjoy making just as much. So, with that being said, if you haven't seen this series before, I want you to take a look in the description of the video because there you're going to find links to other videos that we did on other positions on Madden 25 Ultimate Team. We've essentially done every position at this point. I, I didn't do kicker, punter, kick returner or anything like that. If you guys have interest in that, I can certainly put up a video about it. I just don't think there's a whole lot of uh, interest in those positions. Most people don't really kick field goals and practically nobody punts. And for kick returners, you pretty much just want to get guys that are good at other positions as well. Maybe other than like a Devin Hester or something like that or maybe a Dexter McCluster. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, I don't think there's a whole lot of interest in that, which is why I didn't create a video on it, or I haven't yet anyway. But make sure that you check those videos out, because you're probably going to be able to find something, at least in one of the videos, if not for a lot of you in many of the videos, that you're going to be able to take advantage of on your own team. So, with that being said, let's start off and take a look at our very first comparison here on the quarterback position. And the cards that we're going to be comparing today are the 84 overall gold Robert Griffin III and the 95 overall elite Russell Wilson. And this is the team captain edition Russell Wilson that is fairly new into the game anyway. So these cards here I call my scrambling quarterbacks. And these are the guys that can really make plays with their feet. Now as you can imagine with the 11 overall difference between these two cards... There's certainly some areas where the Russell Wilson card is going to beat out the RG3 card. However, it is not in the areas of running the football. RG3 with 90 speed and 74 elusiveness is actually better in both of those areas than Russell Wilson. Wilson does, however, have one better throwing power and he has seven better throwing accuracy, as well as better accuracy at all three distances. Now, both of these cards are very good at throwing on the run, which I think is a, an extremely important thing that we need to take into consideration when we're, when we're looking at running quarterbacks. Because if you have a running quarterback that can't throw on the run, well, then once you start running, your opponent knows that all he needs to do is commit on stopping the run. Whereas if you've got a quarterback that can throw on the run, you can start to run with him and then pass it off if a guy comes down to, to try and stop you while you're running. So I think that's a, a very important attribute that we need to look at. And the Russell Wilson with 94 throw on the run, very, very good. But RG3 still, 92 throw on the run. That is going to be good enough to make most passes. Now while we're comparing the attributes here... Like I said, there's definitely an advantage in the Russell Wilson card. Overall, the Wilson card is better. But if you don't have 60,000, 70,000 coins, depending on the day, to buy this Russell Wilson card, this RG3 is still going to suit you very, very well, and it's only going to cost you 6,000 coins. So if you're somebody that likes to run a lot with your quarterback, if you're I hate to throw him under the bus here. If you're London and you, for, for whatever reason you don't have a ton of coins, if you're looking for a budget quarterback, I think Robert Griffin III would suit London's playing style really well. He's got nice throwing power, 
but he's also going to be an incredible playmaker with the ball in his hands. So give him a shot if you haven't yet and you're somebody that likes to run with your quarterback. Now moving on, let's take a look at the next set of quarterbacks and we're going to be comparing what I like to call the pocket passers. And these cards are the 96 overall Fantasy Nick Foles and the 99 overall Playoff Edition Team MVP Peyton Manning. Now obviously we're looking at a big price difference here between these two cards. Peyton Manning is 110,000 coins, whereas Nick Foles, 7,500. And I think these cards are way closer than their prices would indicate. So the Peyton Manning card, in my opinion, highly overpriced. Nick Foles, highly underpriced. And I'm going to tell you why. Despite the fact that Peyton Manning is coming off of his best year ever, and arguably, actually maybe not even arguably, the best statistical season from a quarterback in NFL history, he isn't overflowing with 99 attributes. And that was kind of surprising to me, because when you see a 110,000 coin card, you expect, it's a Peyton Manning for goodness sake, I expect him to have 99 throw accuracy, I expect him to be high 90s in throw power. I expect his throw medium and his throw short to be 99s. Maybe his throw deep's a, a 94, 95, 96, somewhere in that range. But none of them are 99. And I just couldn't believe that. I, I'm astonished. In fact, his throw power, a 94, is actually lower than Nick Foles at a 95. And while I assume that his throw accuracy would just blow away Nick Foles, that's really not the case. Yeah, he's three higher in throw accuracy, just the general throw accuracy attribute. And then he's three higher in throw short, two higher in throw medium, and four higher in throw deep. But, you know, that really doesn't blow away the Nick Foles card by any means. Nick Foles still has amazing throwing stats. And when you look at the throw on the run attribute, which granted, neither of these guys is particularly a quarterback that you're going to run a lot with. But when you do, Peyton Manning only has a 78 throw on the run. That is horrible. 78, really? Is, is he that incompetent when he starts moving that he can't even throw the ball at all? But Nick Foles at a 90 throw on the run is going to be very good at throwing on the run. We combine that with the fact that he's got 95 throw accuracy, you can pretty much run with Nick Foles before you throw the ball, and he's still going to deliver the ball fairly accurately most of the time. So, to be honest with you, when you look at the Nick Foles card, yeah, his throw accuracy may not be as good, but he does have a little bit thro better throw power and that better throw on the run. He's almost as good as Peyton Manning. 7,500 coins versus 110,000 coins. It's insane. I can't believe the price difference between these two cards. Now, obviously, there's a big difference in the rarity of them, and that plays a big factor in it, but we're just comparing these cards as pure players in the game. And Nick Foles is almost as good, like I said, as Peyton Manning. So the value is just by far in his favor. Peyton Manning, way overpriced. Nick Foles, way underpriced. Give him a shot if you're somebody that likes to throw out of the pocket with your quarterback because he's going to do wonders. He is, like I said, he is almost as good as any pocket passer in this game. And I would highly recommend him if you're somebody that's not looking to be mobile with your quarterback. So last but not least, let's take a look at what I call the combination quarterbacks and these are guys that have a little bit of column a as a scrambling quarterback and a little bit of column b as a pocket passer so they're not going to be quite as agile and mobile as the robert griffin and the russell wilson card and they're not going to be quite as accurate as the peyton manning and the nick Foles card but they're a good happy medium between the two and the cards that we're comparing are the 93 overall playoff edition alex smith and the 96 overall elite aaron Rodgers. And the price difference between these two cards is not quite as drastic as the other ones that we've seen, but still a 26,000 coin on average difference. So the Alex Smith is roughly about 4,000 coins and the Aaron Rodgers roughly about 30,000. And it's kind of funny that we're comparing these two cards because years ago, these guys were coming into the NFL draft together, if you didn't know. And most people thought that Alex Smith was the better prospect, which led to Smith going number one overall to the 49ers while Aaron Rodgers slipped all the way into the 20s and went to the Packers. And that was one of the most awkward draft moments because Aaron Rodgers was there at the draft and he was just sitting there in the studio, just sitting there and, and he looked so sad almost. But years later, 
There is absolutely no question that Aaron Rodgers is way better than Alex Smith. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is a potential Hall of Famer. Alex Smith, hate to say it, Chiefs fans, he's a glorified game manager. And Aaron Rodgers is arguably the best quarterback in the NFL today. So it's funny that we're comparing these two cards, but I think that their attributes in this game, in this case, are a lot closer than people would be thinking that they would be. So the big thing between these two cards is that we've got better throw power from Aaron Rodgers, but better throw accuracy from Alex Smith. So first of all, the throw power, Aaron Rodgers, 95 throw power. He also has the 85 throw accuracy deep. Those are the two things that he's better in throwing, but he has lower throw accuracy. He's only an 89 versus Alex Smith being all the way up at a 95 for throw accuracy. Rodgers is also one behind in throw accuracy short and four behind in throw accuracy medium. Rodgers does also have a five advantage in throw on the run, which is something that we need to consider because, like I said, these guys are kind of combination cards. Some people might want to use them on things like a read option on occasion. So let's take a look at the speed. Aaron Rodgers is actually one below Alex Smith in speed which I thought was just baffling. I don't. I, I think if you compared the two in pure speed, uh, just on the field, I think Aaron Rodgers is probably faster. But either way, in the cards at least, Alex Smith is one faster. Now, Aaron Rodgers does also have 15 higher in elusiveness. And while that seems really significant, my opinion is that it's not significant. And the reason for that is because at 45, he's not very elusive still. <laughs> you do not want him to be trying to break tackles. If Aaron Rodgers looks like he's going to get squared up by a linebacker or a safety or even a cornerback, don't let him get hit. Just slide or run out of bounds or do what you need to do to make sure that you don't get crushed because his elusiveness is not going to be good enough that you're just going to be able to slip tackles. So I guess with these cards, you kind of need to consider, is it that important to you that you can throw the ball deeper with accuracy? Are you somebody that throws the ball down the field a lot? And if so, obviously Aaron Rodgers is going to be the better card for you. But if you're somebody that throws typically kind of shorter passes, medium range passes up to 20, 25 yards, maybe 30 yards at the most down the field, Alex Smith is still going to be able to get the job done for you. He's only 4,000 coins. I think he's a great value. He might be the best value card out of all the quarterbacks that we're showing in today's video. So give him a shot. If you're somebody that kind of needs a little bit of both, I, I occasionally I run, but I mostly pass. Alex Smith might be your guy. 4,000 coins, try him out. Even if you don't like him, you can sell him. You only lose 400 coins on the auction price. So it's not that big of a deal. And I think for the most part, most people are really gonna like this Alex Smith card. So anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. And that's probably gonna wrap things up for the budget series as a whole. Thank you all so much for all your support on these videos. Like I said, it has helped my channel grow just in leaps and bounds over the past month or so. So it's really meant a lot to me. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something that you can use for your own teams. And if you have, please make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions on anything, if you have any other suggestions for quarterback cards. And don't worry guys, this is not going to be the end of my channel by any means. I've still got a lot of ideas kicking around in my head. I'm still going to be bringing you some head-to-head -head seasons gameplay, but I also have some really cool ideas for videos that I think you guys are going to like a lot. And those should be appearing sometime probably next week, end of next week most likely, we're going to be able to unveil some of those cool ideas. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.